From the studios of KPFA in Berkeley, this is Education Today. I'm Kitty Kelly Epstein. Welcome to Education Today. Today we are going to be interviewing five undergraduates who are going to school in the United States. We're going to be finding out from them what they've been thinking about their education, their future, and things that are happening in the world. And I want to start first by introducing them and letting you, our listeners, know that you will have a chance to call in and talk with them about their thoughts uh, in a little while. That telephone number is 510-848-4425. That's 510-848-4425. But first, we're going to meet our friends uh, who are going to college in the U.S. and find out a little bit about what they're thinking. Want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Latko. I'm an international student here at Holy Names University in Oakland, California. Uh, I come from Croatia, which is a European country in the Mediterranean. Thank you. Hi, I'm Libby. I'm from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Wonderful. Hi, um, uh, um, uh, um, Josh, and I'm from um, uh, L.A. area. Thank you. Welcome to Education Today. Hi, my name's Dave Brown, and I'm originally from Yuba City, California. Great. Uh, my name is Robbie Wills, and I'm from Tracy, California. Fantastic. Now, KPFA has been doing a lot on the uh uprising in Egypt over the last few days, so we're not going to spend most of our time on that issue because you have been hearing a lot about it already, but I am interested to find out from the students here whether Egypt and what's happening there seems important to them, whether they think that college students are following this issue, and so on. Any thoughts? Sure. Well, I think U.S. students should be paying attention to what's going on in Egypt. They're going to be our colleagues one day when we run the world, so I think it's important that we understand what they're going through and why they're doing it. Thank you. Yeah, I also feel that it is really important that we understand what is happening in other cultures and other other countries around the world so we can understand our lives and our lifestyles in the United States. Okay. Dave, um, so... These students have said they think it's important to follow the issue. Do you think U.S. college students are following the issue? Um, absolutely, I do. Uh, it's a movement over there, and uh, especially being a youth movement, we can all relate as young students and being advocates of change globally. And what kind of change do you think it, what kind of effect do you think it might have on you? Robbie? Um, just to see uh, <clears throat> how much power the youth does have, especially through social media. It's like a domino effect, as you see it with the Tunisia and the protests that people could see it. And then it just filters through more and more movements come through it, just like in Egypt. So it just shows you the power that the youth really does have nowadays. And do you think there could be anything like that in the United States? Do you think anything like that could be needed in the United States? I believe it's possible. Um I mean, we are a very free country. We have a lot, like I said, a lot of the social media. We have the Internet nowadays where we can get our voices heard. Um, it would take everybody to get together. Um, whether it's needed or not, um, I'm not really sure. Okay. Anybody else? I know um, Slotko told me before we started the program that he actually has uh, some listeners from far away so i wanted to give him a chance to uh convey that we only we don't just have people in california listening to this program you want to tell us about who else is listening yeah i just uh, told a lot of my friends and family back home that i'm going to be on a radio show because it's kind of a big deal for me i've never been on one so they're listening so i want to say hi to everybody that's listening back home and they have a big event happening in split croatia where he's from and they're listening on the internet and what's the big event going on in split uh, the big event is uh, our soccer club called Hajduk Split, which is the biggest so- soccer club in in country of Croatia, and it's celebrating his 100th anniversary on Sunday, this Sunday. So it is a big celebration, big fair going on in, in Split, so I just want to say happy birthday to my home club and Hajduk uh, Zhivjic. <laughs> Wonderful. We're so happy to have our listeners from abroad. And, and a, a number of these students actually are, are sports figures themselves. I know Dave plays golf and uh, has done that quite a bit. And we have a soccer player and also Josh is a basketball player. And I think they just won their game yesterday. So these students seem to be well-rounded on the physical end, on the news end. And, and now we'll find out a little bit about whether they're also plugged in on the academic end. One of the things I wanted to 
ask them about is a new book that came out, um, which was written by Richard Aram, uh, a pretty well-known professor at New York University and a colleague of him, of his. And uh, I wanted to read you just a bit of the introduction to this and get the response from uh these uh, college students about whether they think this is true or not. Um, in Aram's book, he says, drawing on survey responses and results from the collegiate learning assessment, which is a standardized test taken by students in their first semester and at the end of their second year, Richard Aram and Josipa Roska concluded that a significant percentage of undergraduates, undergraduates, I'm sorry, are failing to develop the broad-based skills and knowledge they should be expected to master. And uh, in an excerpt from their book, they said, more troubling still, the limited learning we have observed in terms of the absence of growth in this test performance is consistent with the accounts of many students who report that they spend increasing number of hours on non-academic activities, including working rather than studying. They enroll in courses that do not require substantial reading or writing. They interact with their professors outside the classrooms rarely, if ever, and they uh, define and understand their college experience as being something not so much involved with academics, but more focused on social events. Um, Now, this is quite a critique, um, and I'm wondering whether you all feel that this is valid or not. Sure. Well, I think it's actually a really invalid point. I think the CLA assessment completely ignores all of the life skills and the social skills that can be learned by working and participating in extracurricular activities, both sports and otherwise. And so I don't think it's really fair to base an assessment on student growth in over four semesters based strictly on these academic quotas, so to speak. Thank you. Anybody else? Dave, what do you think? Um, I agree with Libby on that point. And uh, the other thing being, we have a wider bandwidth these days of information at, uh, at, our, at our fingertips. And uh, I, I think that people can uh, specify in, in certain areas and uh, really, you know, gain a lot of insight and uh, move away from a, a standardized test, which doesn't really take into account um, the the many layers of learning and education. So by layers of learning and education, you mean things that you don't find in the classroom? Or what, right. what types of things do you mean? Um, well, there's all kinds of things that you can learn in life. Um, for instance, uh, you know, I'm involved with brewing beer and making kombucha and making hard cider and things that... They won't teach you that in a class, although uh, maybe with critical thinking skills, you can learn how to apply those and uh, really learn anything, uh, especially having the Internet there. You can research and really become proficient at anything. So do you feel like you need your academic education then? Couldn't you just learn it all on the Internet? Do you actually need to go to college? Um, Yes, I, I think it's important to be in a community of learners because we all push each other and you not only uh, have your own perspective on things but people challenge you to change your ways so yeah I believe it's very important and I think that uh, college kids in America understand this from the social aspect what do you what do you mean by that um, I'm I mean that we're not all about studying and hitting the books. That That is very important. But we're also engaged with one another, and, and we develop our social skills in, in this way. And something like Facebook really stems from that that line of thinking and that way of existing, which now we can have these movements in Tunisia and in Egypt, and it really all... Uh, correlates with with each other so that that's a really interesting point because i don't think all those people young people out demonstrating in egypt all got a college education but somehow or other they managed to figure out that they needed a different kind of government they actually made it happen so Mm -hmm. you know there is there is some point here about what exactly do we define as education slotka were you going to say something about that 
Yeah, I personally believe that uh, education is not not the key to your overall success in life. Education is just one element of what you gain from uh, your life and that follows you through throughout your life. And I believe that a lot of education in another sense comes from actually experiencing things. I believe that uh, education only gives you tools so that you can become a better person and have a better understanding of the society around you. But overall, I believe that a lot of things that you do in life come from education, uh, from, come from uh, experience. So when you mix and match the experience with education, that's when you, for me, gain an ultimate, an ultimate success in life, and that's when that's when you know that you did uh, that you did good for yourself when you have a lot of experience in different fields because education can just uh, get, get you so far. It cannot give you, it can give you tools, but it cannot give you uh, scenarios and situations where you need to have your basic instincts, which you learn from somewhere else. And so just in life in general and in the workplace as well, you can be the top of the tops in your, in your area. You can read 150 books, but if you do not know how to cooperate with your colleagues, you're not going to be really successful. Which isn't something you necessarily learn from a book. Well, what about the book learning? Do you, do you all study? Do you uh, you do your assignments? You read your textbooks? Do you, Robbie? Yeah, um, I believe people that uh, students that are in college that really want to learn and really there to get their education, they're gonna study. They're gonna uh, read their books. I think the only difference is today is we don't have to put as much time into it because we have so much information readily available to us with the internet, um, sites like Wikipedia. Things like that. Um, maybe, you know, back 20, 30 years ago when you couldn't readily look this information up, you had to read a book for three hours so you figured out that fact that you were looking for. So, yeah, I do believe people still study. So it's speeded up because the information doesn't require you really to memorize everything because you know that some of those facts that you're learning are still going to be available to you at a moment's notice without you memorizing it. It's a really uh, interesting point. Um, I want to give our callers a chance to call in, uh, 510-848-4425. If you're interested in talking with college students about what they're thinking about the world or their own learning experience, are they learning enough in school? Um, now, I think that the book that these gentlemen have written, again, Richard Aram uh, from uh, New York University, are also critiquing the colleges themselves, the professors, and so on. Now, you, you all are saying that you're learning a lot anyway, and there's more to learning than just what you get in a textbook and what shows up on a standardized test. Um, how about the colleges themselves? Are they doing enough to provide you with what you need in, in learning, in terms of learning? I believe that <clears throat> colleges do provide you with a lot of a lot of things that you need for your learning curve, and that they do do a lot of things, but. On the other hand, I, I also believe that a lot of professors just take it book, exam, papers, and that's it. And in in my opinion, it's really important to learn from other people as well. So I, I believe that a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of learning gets done with discussions and just different things like that. When you're critically engaged in thinking about different things and you learn from different people who have different perspective because they come from different backgrounds or different countries as well. So are your uh, are your faculty members encouraging the type of discuss discussion that Zlatko is talking about, or is it a little bit too much by the book? Any uh, comments on that? Yeah. Libby? Sure. Well, I think mine's about half and half. I do have a lot of professors who engage outside the books and the, the standard curriculum, so to speak. They bring in guest speakers. We go on field trips. We go on other trips. Um, we do community service through the class. And so I think that aspect in some of my classes is very important. And I've learned more in those classes outside of the book than I have in other classes that are strictly book, PowerPoint, paper, test. Okay, so some faculty are now including things like community service, and I've heard that also, that a lot of people consider service learning to be a really important element of education. Um, we have a caller now, Craig. Uh, welcome to Education Today. Yeah, I, I, I'm in Northern California. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to say exactly where, uh, because I don't really want to identify which um, college campus I'll, uh, I'll be referring to here, but uh, my wife and I um, both work in a uh, writing program. And um, so uh, I was very uh, struck by the uh, report that was issued that you've been referring to um, when it came out a few weeks back. And um, 
I I think it's understandable that that um, uh, I don't, well first I should I want to say hello to all the students I, and and it's understand I understand okay. why why you feel offended by um, the report um, and I also agree with all of you in saying that there are there are other important things other kinds of learning that that are very important in life I very much agree with that but I have to tell you. Um, working with students in a writing program, um, I'm seeing this up close. Um, there's a real need to work on higher level critical thinking, on, on the ability to communicate cogently and coherently in writing. And uh, there's a lot of shortcomings in that area, and it's not necessarily to blame it on students per se. Um, it's the, the system as a whole and what's emphasized and how courses are conducted. Um, so if you have a uh, kind of standard uh, uh, testing, you know, book, book reading testing, um, I understand, you know, the deficiencies in that. We, we try to go beyond that. And um, How do you go beyond that? What do you do that's not just the book reading and the testing? Oh boy, it's hard to boil down, but it's 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 an interactive process basically, instead of just uh, kind of cut and dry. I mean, there are you know, if you're taking a chemistry class, then obviously you have to read the books and remember remember a whole lot of stuff and answer a lot of questions in a very cut and dry way. But to be able to um, discuss a complex issue requires more than doing an internet search. That's one of the things I've been struck by that we've noticed among our own students and that has been referred to several times here in the discussion. Well, you know, it's a lot easier. We don't really need to read whole books to find out things anymore. And that is one of the problems that we've um, really noticed. Um, the, the advent of the internet is great in so many ways that, you know, I don't need to go into that. But it's a shortcut to, to learning and it eliminates or, or greatly reduces the need to um, read a longer uh, analysis or presentation and have a kind of interact interactive experience with that like say reading reading uh, a book or a large section of a book and assessing what you're reading critiquing it you know, to yourself as you're reading it, figuring out what to make of it, and then being able to respond to it in a in a cogent way. Okay, so here we have some support in in a way for the uh, authors of the book who say that uh, there is not a enough uh, kind of critical thinking and d developed writing, and that actually in some ways reliance on the internet may be contributing to that. Do you all have a response? Yeah, Libby. No, I'd like to respectfully disagree with you. I think as students, we actually have access to a greater amount of information. And so by being able to conduct an Internet search, we have access to so much more information. And it's allowing us to think even more critically because we're not citing the same sources throughout a whole paper. We're citing a variety of opinions and a variety of sources. And so we're really analyzing the issue on a much deeper level because we're thinking about it from several different aspects. Thank you. Uh, Zlatko? Plus, we're not limited by one. I would agree with Libby, and I would say that we're not uh, limited with one book. We're not limited with one source, but we can look at other sources wo worldwide, which are here provided for us just in an enter, enter click on a computer. Uh-huh. That's an interesting point. In anybody else on this point? Is it uh, Now, Zlatko saying that actually it's easier to find out an international viewpoint, which I think is actually an interesting uh, point, that... Uh, I know when I went to college, ex access to what somebody in Croatia is thinking uh, was something I would have to spend a long time looking for. I would have to go to the college library, see if they had any newspapers from the other country. You know, it, it would be uh, quite difficult, and, and it is easier for you. Now, whether we can get Americans interested in finding out what other people are thinking is a whole other issue, but, but it is certainly uh, easier to do. Yes, Laco? <clears throat> Which only ultimately gives you a variety of choices, so you can pick and choose and see what, what really works for you. So you have a different perspective from a person in Australia who's thinking about Egypt, for say, now, and you have a person who's thinking about Egypt in Europe, and now you have a person in, in the United States as well. So you mix and match those three, those three different, different opinions, and 
and you can create your own opinion and see what 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 positives you can take from each side and bring them and and include them into your critical thinking about the problem. And also, uh, I guess another point uh, related to this is we are all hearing a lot about people's difference in learning styles, and the fact that you can actually watch the video of somebody in uh, Egypt adds another dimension for somebody for whom reading is not necessarily all of it. So, um, so here's here we have a. a contrasting point of view but writing is really a discipline and so I guess one of the issues is is there so much else going on in the lives of college students in terms of social activity sports and being on the internet that there's no time to develop the discipline of writing and I again want to give our callers a chance to weigh in on this at 8484425 I wonder if uh, Dave or Robbie do you have any comment on whether you have the time to develop the discipline of writing because it is quite difficult to learn how to do it in a really cogent way um yeah i can take that question i i think that there is plenty of time to develop uh, a, a good skill set and uh in involving writing uh the, the writing process i think that it has to be a commitment like anything else that um you know maybe even uh just a journal for yourself or um and and really, I, I think Craig makes a good point um, to really get a foundation on any given subject. You do need to uh, delve in and, and read books and not get such a watered-down version of what's going on in any given issue. So um, I can think back to studying the game of golf, which is one of my passions, and and reading you know many books and taking diligent notes and then critically thinking about it, analyzing the content, and really, you know, being on my search to become better. And and uh, I, I say that because I think kids nowadays, um, they want to find a passion for something. And it, it may involve writing about it, but if, if we're writing about a subject we don't care about, then it's hard to really get on board and, and uh, do some great work. Thank you. Um, we have another caller, Barbara from Berkeley. Welcome to Education Today. Hello, Barbara? Um, and, uh, it's the female student. I apologize. I didn't get her name. But regarding her comment about the Egyptian situation, and she said we need to know when because when we – Rule the world. And I just want to comment that that's such an arrogant comment. As an American, we should not be ruling the world. We should take care of our own business at home and let other countries rule themselves. Okay. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Barbara. I'm not sure that's what Libby meant. Maybe, she, maybe is, is, is that what you meant? You want to respond to that? Sure, I'd love to respond. That's not what I meant at all. What I meant by when we rule the world, I meant our generation as a whole. And it's important to understand what each generation and each era, each area of the world is going on, what's going on in each of those worlds, because collectively our generation needs to have an understanding of each other, so that when all of us work together, we have, right. you know, we know the background of one another. Yeah, thank you. I, I had the impression she was saying when their generation runs the world rather than our generation, and that is going to happen. <laughs> that's that's pretty uh, inevitable. Uh, Harry from San Francisco, welcome to Education Today. Yes, good afternoon. First of all, I understand that uh, a lot of college students, their reading and writing skills are not as the par. Is that true? And the second thing I was wondering about their critical thinking skills, especially relating to the Internet, because I see so many adults that when you try to you try to, you know, talk to them. There's just a logical impasse where they fall off a cliff and you can't carry on the conversation no matter how many facts you present. So I was wondering how this gener how they felt this generation was able to, you know, interpret the news. Are they able to see this Fox's propaganda and so forth? Uh, okay, so interesting question. Uh, Dave, you got a response to that? Um, I do. I, I think we are aware of the media bias and, um, you know, going back to... Uh, the the issue the global issues um i i feel like our generation is already aware that each human being deserves basic human rights and that we we all do need to coexist and uh function a, as one whole so going back to 
Libby's comment of when we rule the world, meaning our generation, um, we don't want to just, um, you know, be America and, and taking on other people's issues or creating problems elsewhere just to get a bigger piece of the pie. I think everybody here just wants to get along. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm not sure. We've kind of had some response to the reading and writing issue uh, already, and I'm going to take another caller, and then if people want to respond to both of those issues at the same time, it would be good. Scott from Petaluma, welcome to Education Today. Hi, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Um, well, um, as I recall, Libby's word choice was run, which you know could be interpreted as arrogant, but I think that was the word she said. Um, so I got what she meant. Um, but... I, I appreciate this conversation. I think it's a good one. Um, I think on all sides there are valid points. Um, I probably graduated from that unnamed university with the writing program. It's down on the peninsula. It usually goes with a big red S, my guess. But um, keep it down. And one of the things as we're going forward in this world here is we need to communicate well with each other. And there are certain things, you know, sociology, all kinds of subjects that, you know, you can open the books up a little bit. But there are some like math and English and language skills that, you know, just vocabulary and uh, I'll, I'll say the misuse of language I've heard here, although these people sound well-spoken, I've heard a lot of words dropped in that just don't make sense and they're the wrong words. And so as we communicate with each other, you know, the empathy, the breadth of experience, the breadth of uh, all of that is good and understanding, but we do need the depth, we do need the clarity because... You know, simple mistakes are things that can cause big understand, big misunderstandings. And so I really want to stress those basic skills as we, you know, open things up to a broader understanding. And I, I, I just think, you know, we're, we are losing that. You know, there are a lot of, um, online universities, university education has become very watered down in some respects. And I think that's what we're seeing. You know, more than anyone in particular is, you know, spending too much time um, brewing beer rather than, you know, hitting the books. I, I did some of that in college, too. <laughs> okay, thank you for the call. Dave, I wonder if you uh, have any comment that you'd want to make on that. Uh, no comment at this point. Okay, probably a wise decision. All right, Craig from uh, San Leandro, welcome to Education Today. Oh, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I was just uh, thinking uh, with these students, um, there was a show, I guess it was on um, PBS, about how the Internet is really distracting kids. A lot of kids are in the classroom with uh, a laptop, and they have to sort of multitask. And I was wondering if they could, you know, maybe say a few words about that. The other thing is, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the Internet, the people also really spend a lot more time writing, just writing emails, uh, writing whatever. Um, I always thought that, you know, even kids in grammar school could set up their own blog and just, it would, just the practice of it would be, you know, it would be a way of developing their writing skills. And just one last quick point, uh, as a host, have you thought about having this person on your show who wrote an article called Got Milk? Got uh, Doe, uh, I think her name is Joanne uh, uh, Barrick or uh, uh, Barkin. Uh, she was recently on uh, Across the Great, um, I mean, uh, um, Across the Green, um, you know, another KPFA show. Thank you. I'll look into that. Um, we just have another minute yet so, left, so I wanted to just wrap up with a couple things. I think a good point was made in this by this last caller about email actually increasing the amount of writing people do. I also want to say that uh, Dave was telling me before the show about how he feels that actually the world uh, is opening up to people in even in a period of unemployment and so on because they're able to pursue their passions, to send up green businesses and so on. And I think in that context, uh, he was discussing the enterprises that he's developing in college. So I think the caller might have uh, misunderstood a bit all the benefits that are coming out of some of the enterprises that our undergraduate students are uh, involved in. I want to thank you all very much for being in the program. I was very interested to hear your comments and I personally feel you are extremely well informed about many many issues and I don't know what our callers felt I mean our listeners felt about that but uh, I really enjoyed
enjoyed the dialogue very much and appreciated you being here with us. Uh, this is Kitty Kelly Epstein with Education Today. We air every second and fourth Friday of the month at 2.30. I want to thank our producers, Jaron Epstein and Kevin Cartwright, and our board op, Erica Bridgman. Uh, looking forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. know that KPFA didn't actually invent the model of listener-sponsored radio. Others had 